this video, we're going to discuss remediation options whenever you're investigating a security incident in a Cronus Cyber Protect Cloud. In my example from the previous investigation video, we're looking at this executable file, and you're going to have some different remediation options uh, based on the node that you're selecting in the attack graph. In this case, we'll go to the response actions here. You're going to have an option for deleting that file with an optional comment. Similar to that, we can quarantine that file. And we'll talk a little bit more about quarantine in the next video. You also have the option to add this file to an allow list for any or all of your plans, your protection plans. Maybe this um, was a true positive, for instance. But in this in this case, this is um, a known malicious file, so we could add it to the block list here for, again, any or all of the protection plans with our comment. And this is looking at response actions on an individual file or a, a process, for instance. Now, if we go up to the top, we're going to have different remediation actions that we can take from the system level. So if we go to this, uh, select the system and choose that same response actions, you'll see some options for creating a script using generative AI and the ability to run that script, running an existing script, so utilizing the scripting functionality that's included in the platform. We have uh, Bash and PowerShell scripts that you're able to uh, use from a library or create your own custom scripts. For investigation, you can perform a forensic backup on that system, which is going to do a snapshot of the current running processes and a raw memory dump. And where that backup is being stored and your comment. We're also able to remotely connect into that system using the proprietary near protocol, RDP, or through the web client, as well as transfer files. We have network isolation options to isolate the system only, isolate and backup, iso isolate and backup with forensic data, or isolate and power off. And each of those uh, settings are going to have a message that you can display to the user and an optional comment. With the network isolation, you also have exclusions that you can set for specific ports, for incoming and outgoing ports, and uh, IP address or DNS names for incoming and outgoing connections. Below network isolation is restarting the workload. You could restart that uh, workload with a timeout. Um, and it can fail out if, if the user's logged in. You've got your message displayed in your uh, comment and an option to just uh, restart um, in real time. We have recovery options for spinning up that critical workload in the Acronis data center. So if um, that system is isolated and um, maybe disconnected or powered off uh, for investigation. Um, you could spin up from a known clean recovery point. Uh, this particular system is not uh, doesn't have a recovery server created, so I wouldn't be able to do it. So it'll probably just error out for me here. But uh, if I did have the and you'll notice it has that advanced pack indicator here. So if I did have disaster recovery enabled for that system. I could perform the failover right here as a, a response action to this incident. Um, 
similarly, we can uh, restore from a backup. So instead of uh, spinning up the machine in the Acronis data center, we can actually uh, restore the machine um, from any of the points in time that are available as the full machine or files and folders or run as a VM on your own local uh, virtualization. And then down at the bottom, you've got a patch option. So what you're seeing here with the forensic backup, the scripting, remote connectivity, disaster recovery, and even uh, restore from backup and patching, all of these options are going to really set Acronis apart in the um, endpoint detection and response space because we're going to have much more remediation options uh, than a lot of the other competitors in, in the field. Um, since we do have those integrated components in this unified platform. And you're seeing patch options here. I can choose the patches that I want to deploy, uh, reboot if it's required, and optional comments here. Now, these are um, actions that I can take directly from the system, but we also have the remediate entire incident at the top which uh, is kind of a playbook to go through that's just going to step-by-step walk you through the process of uh, remediation of this incident. So you've got option for false positive to add to allow list and you know, change investigation to false positive with your comments. But with a true positive, we're going to stop any of those threats, quarantine threats, roll back any changes using a local cache. So uh, similar to how our active protection works for ransomware, we can actually utilize that local cache and roll back any of those changes as a response action. And if uh, there are no uh, changes to, to roll back from, then we have the option to go down and recover the workload, again, from the backup or uh, failing over in disaster recovery. And down below, you've got the option to add to a block list, uh, patch the workload, just like we saw before, um, and at the bottom, change the investigation state to closed and provide in your comments. And once you uh, click on the remediate here, it's just going to start from the top in step one and work its way down this list. I appreciate your time. Uh, that's all I wanted to cover today for the remediation actions. Um, once, you, once you run those, they are going to show in the activities here uh, for your tracking. Um, I hope this video was informative. And I'll see you in the next video regarding quarantine. Thanks.